You know, I had, I, I had a little bit of a rough week. I just want to show you for a minute because I think it might go for all. You know, sometimes we go through life and we have a battle. We've got 22 right here. And we go out through the week, we let it beat us up. Today, there's going to be a time in this service that the pastor is going to get her off the call. And that battle that y'all are raging within your ears and in that mind, that Satan is up there picking with you, he's going to get a call here, and you can lay it down right here. You don't got to have, handle that battle by your, on your own. And the thing about that battle, a lot of times, it's in your mind, and it's when you're alone. And nobody else is around but you. And that is pounding. And a lot of times we give in to the flesh instead of walking in the spirit. But if we learn to walk in the spirit and know that the mind, you know, the Bible says, renew the mind by reading of the word. To cast down those thoughts. That's when we fail a lot of times. We don't catch it. We don't cast it down. We grab it and we meditate on it. Instead of meditating on God's word. That frees us from that. So this morning... If you're battling in your mind, if you're battling anything, and that alpha call comes, and you don't even have to wait for an alpha call. If you're dealing with it without this thing, you can bring it here. And you can lay it down. And you can walk away free man, free woman. You don't have to do it on your own. You're not by yourself. You got a you got a savior that's walking with you. Sometimes he's carrying us. Let's go a little bit, bro. Dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we just thank you, Father. As we enter this service, Lord God, we just want to lift you up, Father. Give you the glory. Give you the praise, Father, that you so richly deserve. That you walk with us, Father God, every step of the way. That we just recognize that, Lord God, through our battles. That we just call out to you, knowing that you're there. Lord, I pray for each and every one in this service, Lord God, that they be battling, that they be lost, and don't know you as their Lord and Savior. That today will be that day. That they'll lay it all down, Father God. And they'll, they'll hearken to the call that you stir it in, inside their spirit, Lord God. They won't worry about what people think. That they'll just come to you, Father God. And be free. Be free. For that gift that you gave us. That you died on that cross for our sins. You shed your blood. You bore the stripes that we might be healed. We should be healed. Only we believe. Lord, I thank you, Father, for the word that's coming this morning. I thank you for this praise team that's got here in practice, Lord God, that we will lift you up and give you praise, Lord God. I thank you for each individual that's in this house, Lord God, that they come seeking you, Father God. That you just meet them right where they're at, Father God. They can even make their altar right where they stand, Lord God, and just cry out to you, and you will be there for them, Lord I just thank you, Father God, and I give you praise, and we give you glory, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we came to lift him up this morning. And uh, that's what this first song is called, Lift Him Up. So y'all help us worship.
morning, and y'all remember these dates and times here. The ladies' ministry Bible study will meet this Sunday, uh, March the 10th at 3 p.m. I am second prayer is tonight at 5 p.m. The ladies' ministry is having a ladies' event on Saturday, March the 16th at 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Bring your favorite finger food and join us for a night of fun. Join us for our NPCC Easter Egg Hunt on Wednesday, March 27th at 7 p.m. And we will have a Good Friday worship service on Friday, March 29th at 7.30 p.m. Y'all start inviting your family and friends to come out and join us for our Easter Sunday. If I can get to ushers if you guys want to come down this morning. We'll go over our prayer requests this morning. Just remember these names here. Michelle Stowe, Rebecca Caldwell, Mark Tucker, Tammy Cruz, Laura Grinder, Jackson Brothers, Rebecca Baskins, Claire Bingham, Shandy Miller, Star Camp, Sarah Brown, Alana Sorrow, Scott Bailey, Danny Lord, Ann Banks, Mark Brown, Brittany McCall, and Chris Shaw were all battling cancer. Lee King, Steve Day, Scott Williford, Gail Grogan, Jamie Taylor, James Hart, and Manaya Brown all need a healing in their bodies. Jason Barnett recovering from an infection. Officer Tuberville having surgery this Friday. And let's continue to pray for covering over our Madison County school systems. We have any unspoken prayer requests by uplifting hands? Let's all stand and go to our Lord of Prayer this morning. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to come out of your house, Lord. We just thank you for your presence being here with us today. Lord, I just ask you to be with our praise team as they continue to bring praise to you, Lord. Lord, we just look forward to the message that's being brought by Brother Levi this morning, Lord. We know the message has been laid on his heart, and we know that what he says, we can take and go outside these doors and apply it to our everyday life. Now, Lord, I just ask you right now that you just continue to bless this service. And bless this time of tithes and offerings this morning, Lord. Break it, bless it, multiply it, and use your kingdom as you see fit. Everybody in the house, be careful to keep you all honor and glory and praise. And we all say again, amen. 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 Our kids would like to come up there and bless us with a song this morning.
there. Oh, yes. The youth can be dismissed. Excuse me. Not me, not your, your boss at work, 
Not your mom and dad. Not anybody qualifies you except for God. See, God has given us the, He's given us something that only He can give. Now, how did He give this to us? There's a way that He had to be able to give this to us so that we could be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. It says in verse 13 there, it says He had delivered us from the power of darkness. Who's been in darkness before? And I'm not talking about just physical darkness, I'm talking about spiritual darkness. Anybody been there before? That's a tough place to be. Yep. A lot of times when you get in spiritual darkness, you know, you're not, you know, you're not going and grabbing a whole bunch of you know, people and in their darkness with you. A lot of times it's just you, right? And you feel you feel alone, you feel lost, and you don't know what to do. But I'm so thankful that, that we serve a God that if we want to be delivered from that darkness, He has given us. The ability to be able to deliver, to be delivered from that power of darkness. And it says that he has conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son, of his love. But in verse 14, it says that we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. This morning, I want to talk to you for a little bit about there's power in the blood. There is power. In the blood. Amen. Hey, I'm going to ask you, my dad, if he'll say a prayer over the message this morning. Father, we love you this morning, God. We just thank you for your presence when we're in this place. God, we ask my dad, would you just come down and speak to us through your word? We give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. There is power in the blood. What kind of power? Well, this verse, it says that there is redemption power. You know, if you look at that word redemption, redemption means liberation from captivity by ransom paid. And we talked a little bit about freedom the other day. And, and this was this past Wednesday night we talked about being free and, and walking in that freedom. Well, there's a reason that we are able to be free. There's a reason that we have freedom. And it was by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Because he set us free from captivity by that ransom that was paid on the cross. Yes. By that blood that was shed for each and every single one of us. See, we've, we've all been in the captivity of sin at some point in, of our lives. You know, it says that you know, we were born into sin. That we were born into iniquity. You know, there's got to be a point in your life to where you realize that I'm tired of, of walking in this sin. I'm tired of, you know, doing things that aren't pleasing to God. And I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be changed by the power of God. I'm going to be somebody different. Amen. Because sin, sin will have you beaten. It'll have you bound. It'll have you defeated. But aren't you glad this morning of the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sin. Right. He wiped your slate clean. <coughs> Amen. There's, there's not many people out in this world. There's nobody that can do that, but there's not many people out in this world that will even do that for you in a natural sense. Because, you know, you might, you might be at odds with somebody and and, and maybe y'all aren't seeing things, you know, exactly the same. And you know, you you know, you hug and make up and all this stuff and tell each other you're sorry and, and all that. And you 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 know start you know going you know from there and doing your thing, right? Well then say something else comes back up, right? And we as humans, that flesh, it wants to bring up that stuff back in the past, right? It wants to bring up, well, you know, what, what about this, you know? Well, I thought you forgave me of that. But obviously it's still in your mind. Obviously you haven't truly forgiven me because it's sitting right there on the forefront of your brain because you just brought it back up, right? I want you to know that we serve a God that when he wipes your slate clean, he wipes your slate clean. And what's left in the past is in the past. And today is a new day. See, we serve a God who forgives and forgives. He forgives and forgets. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm so thankful that he does. I'm so thankful that he does. 
It says in Hebrews 9 and 22, it says, in fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the work that Jesus did at the cross, we could not have been forgiven. There's no way. But that ransom was paid for each and every single one of us. That price was paid that, that only he could pay. Only his blood could do that. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, the church, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have anything to offer anybody. You know, there would be no, you know, forgiveness of sins. There would be no, you know, chance of eternal life. But praise God this morning that we've got something to offer people that are lost and they're dying and they're out in that, that darkness that we talked about. We've got something that we can go tell them. We talked about it on Wednesday night, the good news. We can go tell them the good news of Jesus Christ and the salvation that awaits them. Some people don't even know that there's salvation out there for them. You know, we talked about that on Wednesday night, that, that they're out there looking for it in so many different areas and so many different avenues of their life. They're looking for something that, that will make them feel better about their situation. That will either, you know, make them feel better or take their mind away from it. But I'm telling you right now this morning, there's only one thing that can truly take the place of anything you've got going on, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Salvation is here today, and it was bought and paid for by the power of of the blood of Jesus. Right. And I'm telling you right now, if that will get somebody excited over here this morning, Amen. then I don't know what will. Right. That you have the opportunity this morning, you have the opportunity to experience salvation, to experience freedom because of Jesus. Okay. Now, you know, we're, we're, we're talking, we're talking about this this morning, and, and we're going to be real with each other. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying I expected anything. All right, but you know, we kind of got you know a little loud and, and clapped our hands and stuff. But I didn't see anybody get out of their seats or anything and do anything, you know, crazy. And that's fine. How many of y'all have got a, uh, a house payment? Anybody got a mortgage? How many of y'all got a car payment? Amen. Amen. <laughs> If somebody came in here and told you this morning that you didn't know another dime on your house, that it was paid for, how would you feel? <laughs> there would be people running around. There would be people that wouldn't even know that they'd be swinging their arms. I don't know what to do. I'm so excited. What's that song about the Pointer Sisters? I love this. I'm so excited and I just can't hide. <laughs> exactly. This place will come unhinged. I'm telling you right now that Jesus paid a price that nobody in this world could have ever paid for this morning. And it's enough for us to be excited about every single day of our life. That's, that's why, you know, he didn't ask us for much for it. He just wants us. He wants us to walk with him. He wants us to live Inside of that, that liberty and the freedom that he's given us. See, Satan's greatest fear is a child of God coming to the realization that if we're covered by the blood of the Lamb, then he can't touch us. Because he has no authority over you this morning. Because Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave at Calvary. And when we, when we begin to walk in that righteousness, then we're made more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors this morning. There might be somebody in the house this morning that, you know, maybe you, you backslid. Maybe the devil's, you know, had his way with you. And, you know, he, he wants to go after you. He wants to go after your family. He wants to, to touch your business. You know, he, he, he's wanting to attack you any way that he can. Right. Any and every way that he can. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're sitting in this place and, and that's you this morning. I want you to know the devil is trembling right now. And why is he trembling? Because you are in the power and the presence of God. His spirit's working in this place this morning. And you come to the place where all things can be made new. Right. See, when we put ourselves in his presence, 
That's when God can begin to do a mighty work. And I don't know if you came in here hurting. I don't know if you came in here broken this morning. But I want you to know that the greatest position that's ever lived, that's ever existed, existed, is in this place this morning. And He can put you back together. He can put you you back together together better than any doctor out there. Then better than any, you know, self-help class or anything like that. He can give you true peace. And see, Brother Mitch, you you hit the nail on the head this morning when you were talking about this altar. You know, this is the place right here where lives can be changed. Where circumstances can be forever changed. And the reason the devil is struggling is because not only are you in the power and the presence of God, but right now, you're just a few steps away from your breakthrough. And if you really want it this morning, it's waiting on you. I promise you. You know, in John 14 and 6, you know, John the Baptist, he was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And Jesus, he was talking to Thomas in this atmosphere. But he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's not complicated. Mm-hmm. See, John was telling people, hey, there's going to come one after me that he is going to be the lamb that God has slain before the foundation of the world. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is telling Thomas here, he's saying, hey, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I want us to think about this this morning. This is the same Thomas that doubted when the disciples told him that they had seen Jesus. Come on. And Thomas, what did he tell him? He said, I want to see him for myself. I want to see him with my own eyes. And then Jesus, he showed up. But I love what Jesus told Thomas. Whenever he appeared before him, he says, He said, blessed are they that have not seen, but yet they believe. See, I've never never actually seen Jesus before. You know, I've seen the works of Jesus. I've felt his spirit. But honestly, I've never seen him face to face. I mean, really, if he he came along to that door right now, I might be a little freaked out at first. (laughs) I say that, but you know, I imagine that when when Jesus when He comes on the scene, that there's there's probably a, a warming, loving presence that are there. But then I'm also reminded of being on the boat and thinking it was a ghost, <laughs> and it says that they were scared. You know, let's let's be real this morning. So yeah, I might freak out a little bit. Um, am I alone in that? Anybody else? Yeah. All right. I mean, good company. But see, when Jesus, when Jesus told him this, and he said that blessed are they who have not seen and yet believed, he was speaking to Thomas's doubt. Right. And see, doubt is one of the many tricks of the devil. Yep. Right. Doubt is a tool that the devil will try and fool you with. Yeah. And he might be telling somebody right now that everything that I've said up until this point is just a load of junk. Mm-hmm. All right? He might be. But I want to tell you this morning that what I'm telling you is truth. And this morning, the word says that you will know the truth and that the truth will set you free. Well, let's go back to John 14 and 6. What is the truth? Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way and I am the life. Think about that this morning. If you want truth, go to Jesus. You don't have to look any any further than Jesus. In Romans 6 and 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, that's the key to eternal life, is a life lived for Jesus Christ. 
But I love here in this verse right here, Jesus says, I've got something to offer you. He says, there's a gift that's waiting on you. How many of y'all like gifts? I love gifts. I want you to know this morning that he's got a gift for you. And you might say, well, you know, you know, I've already received a lot of gifts for, from him. You know, does he have something else? He sure does. Yes, right. I promise. If you want more of God, if you're looking for something deeper, I promise you he's got it. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. He's got endless power. That's right. Thank you. Endless resources. There's no limitations on it. The only limitations on God are the ones that we put on it. That's right. That's good. Amen. Yes. In Galatians 3 and 13, it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. See, if, if you hung on a tree, you were cursed. And I want to remind you this morning that that cross is made from wood. And where did that wood come from? A tree. It absolutely came from a tree. And this was, think, think about this this morning, this was the law. Right. Now, what's so funny, what's so funny about, you know, the crucifixion, I wouldn't say funny, but what's so impactful of the crucifixion of Jesus is the fact that all these Pharisees and all these people were so tore up because Jesus was saying that, that I am the Messiah, right. that, that I'm the one, I am he that, that God sent to, to save the world. And wouldn't you know it, that they followed everything up into the law to make sure that the curse was taken. Probably not even thinking about it, but they did. Because they hung him on a cross. See, he took the curse and he took our shame so that we didn't have to live with that hanging over our head. But unfortunately, this morning there are millions of people that are living in shame because of their cursed lives. And Instead, they decided to curse Jesus and blame him. Right. Anybody ever heard of this before? Anybody ever blame Jesus? Heard somebody blame Jesus? Yeah. I'm telling you this morning, Jesus isn't out there to hit you over the head with a hammer or anything. He doesn't want to hurt you. Right. He wants to help you. Right. He wants to remove the curse off of your life. That's what he wants to do. And I want you to know that the, the work, the work's already been done. All we've got to do is walk in it. You know, I heard it this morning on the radio. Me and Daddy got in, I got in the car with him this morning, and we started on our way to church to get ready for praise team practice. And, and the lady on 88.9, I, I don't know her name, but she reminded me, and everybody who was listening to it this morning, that, that we're not fighting for the victory. We're fighting from the victory because the victory's already been won. You're already victorious in this place this morning. All you got to do is walk in. All you got to do is claim it this morning. Amen. And the reason is because in John 19 and 30, it said that Jesus said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. See, the work's already been done. The work's already been finished. The battle's already been won. We got to claim it. We got to walk in it this morning. When Jesus said this, he didn't mean that his life was finished. He meant that the work that he was sent to complete was finished. And sin and death had been defeated. Now, see, the other half of the story relies on us. It's a choice for us. Will we accept his gift? And will we pursue a life that's free of sin? That's free of bondage? Or will we fall right back into the things that have plagued us, that have plagued mankind for thousands of years? Right. See, this isn't this isn't something that just came around. I know I know we talk a lot of times about that we live in a dark and, and dying and lost world, but I'm telling you, it's been dark, dying, and lost for a long time. It didn't just happen when Biden became president. I promise you. You know, I'm not talking politics this morning, but everybody wants to, you know, blame one man. It's not one man's fault. It's every man's fault. It's all of our faults. I told you this before, but there's a reason he had to go down on that cross. And it was because of us. 
It was because of us. You know, people people talk all the time. I can't believe the Jewish people they they killed Jesus. It wasn't just the Jewish people. See, things lined up the way that God intended for them to line up. But the reason He had to be on that cross was because of you and I. Because we wouldn't have had the ability to spend an eternity with Him in heaven had He not came down and did this work. Has anybody ever heard of the Passover before? Anybody heard of that? During the first Passover, which was set in the, the city of the town of Egypt, anybody heard of Egypt before? And there was a there was a man by the name of by the title of Pharaoh. Yeah. Y'all heard the song before, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. You know, there's a little. That's one reason why I don't like the kids holding mics up there because I want to I want to see the you know I want to see the arm movements you know especially when we used to do one of my favorite was you know when we used to do oh let my people go yes. oh. yeah. <laughs> that was always my favorite you know. We always, you know, did the, uh, wow. But that's what that song is, is referencing is, you know, Moses, he went and told Pharaoh, he said, he said, hey, he said, God has sent me to tell you to let his people go. And, and Pharaoh said, no, we, we're not going to do that. And see, all these plagues begin to, to rise up. All these different things begin to, to happen. And the first Passover took place, the children of Israel, they were told specific instructions to go to their homes and to cover the two side posts and the upper posts of the door with the blood of the Lamb. And that night, when the death angel passed over, when he passed by, the firstborn of any house that was not sealed when the blood of the lamb was killed. But those houses who were covered with the blood, they were saved. I want you to think about that this morning. Do you have the seal of the blood of Jesus Christ on your life? Are you sealed with it? Because that's essentially what happened when that death angel came by. Is that those houses, they were sealed. See, when that death angel came by, he saw that blood and he said, you know what? I can't come in there. I have no place in there. There's nothing I can do in there because it's covered by the blood. And I want you to know this morning that if you're feeling like that you've been attacked, if you've been feeling like, you know, that nothing can go right, it's time to cover ourselves back in the blood of Jesus Christ. To cover our homes, cover our families, cover this church and this community. There's a covering that's waiting on us. Now, I told you earlier that, that John, he had told people that, that Jesus was coming in John 19 and 30. Excuse me. In John 1 and 29, John saw Jesus coming toward him. And he said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away all the sin of the world. The Lamb of God. Now, let's think about this. If he is a Lamb then that means that his blood over our door, right. it seals us. Right. There's not another person's blood. Right. You know, you might feel like going and killing your neighbor. <laughs> you might feel like, you know, hurting the people around you, you know, doing all, all this. I don't feel like killing my neighbors. I love mine pretty good. <laughs> my neighbors being my mom and dad and Ethan and Ashley. And you might feel like, you know, going and hurting them or, or you know, something like that, you know, because you, you feel like, you know, well, I just can't stand in them. You know, they do this and that. And, you know, I just, I want, you to, I want you to know this morning that there's only one person in the history of this world whose blood was shed that could really do anything for us. That's right. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus became that lamb for every single one of us. And the sacrifice that he made for us on the cross by the shedding of his blood, it can still save. It can still protect. It can still heal. And it can break generational 
curse. It can still do it. It hasn't lost its power. The power is still at work. Until he comes back down here and gets us, Jesus' power is still at work in this earth. It says, 1 Peter 3 and 18, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Put to death in the flesh. See, this, death, this flesh is going to die. This, this flesh is going gonna, is, is gonna to rot. You know, if he doesn't come back, he, it said they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter, they said, what shall we do? And then he laid it out for them. See, without the blood of Jesus Christ being spilt on the cross, there would be no repentance or forgiveness for sins. It wouldn't be possible. The work had to be done. And even Jesus, Jesus said, you know, I told you before that he was all man and he was all God. You know, the all man side of Jesus, when he was praying in, in that garden, he said, Father, let this cup pass for me. I don't really want to do this. Is this really how we have to do this? But then the all God part took hold. And it says, you know what? Not my will, but thy will be done. He knew that there was a work to be done. Aren't you glad Jesus did what he was sent to do? And it says that by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. You know, that word repentance, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people don't like that word. Because if somebody's telling you you need to repent, that's them telling you, hey, you've been, you've been wrong. You've been living in sin. You've been doing it wrong. You need to come to a place of repentance. And a lot of times when you tell people that they need to repent, they might get upset, right? Because let's be real, we don't like correction. We don't like somebody telling us what we, you know, we need to do. You know, I can remember when I was a kid and I went, you know, slapped my brother upside the head or did something like that. You know, my mom and dad, they told me, they said, you go over there and you say you're sorry. Now, let's be real. Were we really sorry or were we really sorry? Because, see, a lot of times I was really like, sorry. Didn't mean nothing. And in the words that we've heard every parent say, we probably said, say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. And then we try to put that sweet aside. I'm sorry. But we probably still didn't mean it. We just said it a lot nicer, right? See, there's got to be a changing of the heart for true repentance to take place. There's got to be a changing of the heart. There's got to be somebody that says, you know what? They're right. I'm tired of doing it the way that I've always done it. I'm tired of living in the darkness. I'm tired of living in sin. And I'm ready to become somebody new. And I'm ready to tell God that I'm sorry for everything that I've done. You know, A.W. Tozer, I don't know if you've ever heard of him before, but he's quoted saying, people on earth hate to hear the word repent. And people in hell wish that they could hear it just one more. Right. One more time. Right. One more time. Yep. You know, I, I told you before, I don't know when he's coming back. Mm -hmm. I, I, know that, I know that he is, but I also know that I'm not promised tomorrow either. I know that anything can happen, and unfortunately, that, you know, death's a part of life. I know that makes no sense, but it is. Death is a part of life. But we've got to understand that, that God wants to do something in your life right now while you still got a chance. While he's still got a chance. But he's looking for somebody this morning that will say, you know what? I need to do it now. I need to act now. Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, in Luke, 
verse 9, excuse me, Luke 9, verse 23. It says, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? I go back to the beginning of my message this morning. There's a lot of things that we think that we need. There's a lot of things that we want. But all those things are going to fade away. So you can have all the money in the world. You can have the nicest house, the nicest car. You know, you can have all this stuff. And you can still be lost. And on your way to an eternity in hell. It's not going to save you. Your money's not going to save you. You know. It's just not, it's not going to happen. I told you this before. Your, your mom and daddy, your grandmother and grandpa, they ain't gonna save you. They can't. It has to be a choice that you make for yourself. And it says in this passage, it says that we need to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily. What does that mean? Take up, take up your cross. I thought you said that the the work that he did on the cross was. It was finished. It, it was done. Yes, and he's requiring us to die out to ourselves. And to be the born again man or woman that he has called us to be. That's, that's what he's asking. You know, we should desire and want to do things that please God. Because he did so much for us. If you'll stand with me this morning. Most of us in here value our life, right? That, you know, we try to take care of ourselves and, you know, do things that, you know, would help, you know, prolong our life. But I'm not asking you to think about your physical life right now. I'm asking you to think about your spiritual life. Because that's the one that's really important. That's the one that is going to continue to live on, either in heaven or in hell. And are you doing things right now? Are you making choices to prolong your spiritual life in heaven? Are you doing what it takes? You know, I. I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't, you know, I don't know if you know you're on the greatest peak and the greatest rise up of your spiritual life, and this has just been awesome. You know, this past you know, you know, a few months or something like that, and that's great. That's great. Keep on, keep on going. Know that you're going to hit a valley at some point. Keep going. Keep pushing. But there may be somebody here in here this morning that that maybe you have backslidden. Maybe you've you know, missed the point, that you've missed the mark, and that you need to get things right back with God. I want you to know this morning that He's ready to receive you, and He's ready to make you new this morning. But I will tell you this this morning. We talk about that there was power in the blood, and I want you to know that His blood can overcome anything that you got going on this morning. Whatever it is. It doesn't have it doesn't, maybe it's not even a backslid thing. Maybe it's you know something that's you know causing you unrest at night. I want you to know the blood can overtake it. In Revelation 12 and 11 it says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The blood of the Lamb and the 
the word of their testimony. See, I love there that in that verse, it's got Jesus' part, but then it's got our part as well, right? That we're made overcomers through his blood, but we're also made overcomers by what his blood did for our life. And when we go out and tell people about it, about the amazing things that, that he has done in our life, then we're made overcomers. And I want you to know this morning that you, you can lay claim to his blood this morning and you can let him start writing or maybe rewriting your story today if you'll allow him to do it. And all that starts, it all starts with one step of faith. When you step out in faith and say, God, I'm ready to get serious about this thing. I'm done playing. I'm, I'm done running around and you know, just, just playing church, playing games. I'm ready to be serious about this thing this morning. I want you to know that we're going to open up this altar here in a second. And if and if you feel like that you need to come lay something at Jesus' feet, this place is for you. And he's waiting on you with open arms, ready to accept you in. You ain't gonna come down here here and he's gonna, like I said, he's not gonna bring up your past. He wants to make you new this morning. He wants to do something amazing in your life. Will you move? Will you act? I promise you that if, if you've got enough courage in you to say, you know what? I need to be down here. I promise you, you're going to feel a whole lot better when you walk out that door this morning. We've got water in the baptistry. I've got clothes. Eric's got clothes. If you want to be baptized this morning, we'll meet you in there. Don't let any excuse stop you today. Make it right with Jesus today. Amen. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you for your word this morning. God, I pray that right now that you just begin to put hearts in this place. God, I pray that you just begin to turn minds. And God, I pray that if, if there's somebody in this house this morning that they need something from you, God, I pray that you just begin to impress upon them right now. Lord, we don't, we don't have to be ashamed in this place. Because we've all been there before. God, I pray that you would just let strength and courage, dear God, Jesus, begin to overtake each and every person in this house this morning. And God, I thank you for the work that you're about to do in this place. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. This altar's open, friend. Don't wait till it's too late. I urge you to come spend some time with it today. For so many years, so many lives.